What's up? We're going to show you something that feels a little elaborate, and I don't know why I'm doing it, but it must be done. So, just to keep this in mind, this is a book that I'm working on. I'm really trying to explore just the different dimensions of beings that there can be in the book that exist. So I went to that chat, GBT, GTB, whatever the fuck it's called, and I uploaded a, uh, some document that I just scrambled together. I wanted to have it interpret it in a sense. So I threw it in there to see what would happen, and this is kind of what came up. Now, again, again, this is just a book I'm working on, and I am trying to explore this concept of the multitude of beings that can exist. Mostly because I think that this reflects the same thing in our lives. I think it's much more complex than, you know, we're human beings and then there's the old gods and then there's the higher god. That's Yahweh and that's it. You know, I mean, I'm like, I don't think so. I think it's a lot more complex than that. And this is my best interpretation of how I kind of think this works through the lens of my book, okay? This is not going to make sense to most people at all. You're walking halfway into something where there's thousands of years established of lore to the point in which we're going to start talking about this video here. Things like Ravian the Mad, Thies, Dove, the Titans, the Aeon, all this kind of stuff, the Forgotten King. I can't really sit here and like say, okay, let me tell, let me tell you all the backstory of this before we get into that, because it's going to take me multiple videos, at least an hour long each video, because there's a lot of backstory to this. This is going to serve as something for the future, okay? Now, the thing I'm trying to do here is explore the aspects of the divinities that exist inside of the books. So when I try to explore this divinities, it's just, just remember that this is not necessarily for wide viewing. That's just the best I can say. It's kind of very niche. Now, eventually, these things will be explored in the Forgotten series that I'm working on. It'll all come to fruition, and then this will make a lot more fucking sense, okay? But right now, this is mostly for the people that know what's going on in the story. And this is for those folks. And I want to try to do my best to explain to you how I see the multiple levels of beings here, okay? That's the best I can say it. Let's just jump right into it and, and see what happens. I went to try to see what this whole chat GBT, right? GPT, excuse me, is all about, right? So I wrote a quick paper on the typewriter and I sent it an image and I told it to transcribe it. It did okay, right? It did okay. But I thought this is a great opportunity to see what can be unraveled and maybe you can help me explain to you how the story works, okay? So this is in the lens of book two. Understand that, okay? The journey of Eris will be an echo of the one I find myself on now. This means the communication to the divine being in their proper places. Now, first Eris was shown a vision by Ravian the Mad. So as to Ravian the Mad, the last ascended being. He will represent the conveyor that was once mortal. This man, who was a speaker of the Whisper, had perished in the mortal plane, but now guides Eris from the other realm. I would imagine he has his council of keepers hidden deep between the realms, a place that the Titans and their agents cannot find them. This place is void from what is understood. Now, as for the Titans, minions, first we must establish the Titans do not have the power they once did. After the destruction of the portal, they rely on the spirits, mainly Env. Those creatures that prowl the mortal realms, such as the Nainirin and the foul beasts, have twisted the natural world, such as the undergrowth. These are the ones that will hunt Eris in the mortal realm. 
but it is in the astral that the Titans have unleashed their astral beings, twisted aeons, spirits, and the powerful dragons of old. Real quick, I just want to say that the Titans and the destruction of the portal that will be explored in the further videos of the Forgotten series. Now, it is because of this the Keepers hide themselves deep within the far reaches of the astral realm, a place only ever called man's mortal limit. These exiled keepers have passed into myth, for some have come to calling them conveyors, or even watchers, and they have shaped from afar the world of man. It was Ravian who was the last to visit them on his pilgrimage inward, after the Battle of Falcor Hill in the Murphos, in the like, fucking 1300s. He escaped his mortal body to ascend with the last remaining keepers. Now they will serve Eris in the coming story. They will help guide him from afar and bring him to those other hidden warriors, men of renown, men only ever called the Stone, a group of mythical mercenaries that have become trapped in the stones of the mountain, awaiting Eris to unlock them. Unlock them so they can storm the portal of Oapek and open the way for Eris to access these keepers of old, for the portals have become corrupted and darkened by wickedness. This portal is what Banrion, the Dark Nainirin, has been searching for for many years. And once she has Eris, she will destroy the Keepers, and the final blow to Oapake, the Hidden God, will come swiftly after that. So, let's see what Mr. AI can figure out here. I said, tell me what you understand from this. It says, the narrative describes a mythical journey of a character named Eris, guided by divine and otherworldly beings. Here's a breakdown of the main elements and plot points. One, Eris' journey and guidance. Eris is on a journey similar to the narrator's, with communication to divine beings in their proper places. Ravian the Mad, the last ascended being, guides Eris. Ravian was once mortal and now resides in another realm, leading a council of keepers hidden from the Titans and their agents. Two, the Titans and their minions. The Titans' once powerful beings have lost much of their power after the destruction of the portal. They now rely on spirits and creatures such as the Nainirin, twisted beasts, to hunt Eris in the mortal realm. In the Astral Realm, the Titans have unleashed twisted spirits and powerful dragons. 3. The Keepers The Keepers are beings who have hidden themselves deep within the Astral Realm, referred to as man's mortal limit. They have passed into myth, often called conveyors or watchers. Ravian, who ascended after the Battle of Falcor Hill, is the last to visit them and will guide Eris along with the Keepers. Real quick, the Keepers are the first beings to come into the mortal realm. They're kind of like the AOC. I read it in the Forgotten Chronicles. Um, when One of the first videos, I mentioned the Keepers in one of those videos. Just kind of go back into that. I think it's the second one where I was like, the Keepers and their, the understanding of the world, right? The Hidden Warriors, the Stone. Eris will encounter and unlock a group of mythical mercenaries called the Stone. These warriors are trapped in the stones of the mountain, waiting for Eris to free them. They are essential for storming the portal of Oapake, who which has become corrupted and darkened by wickedness. The Dark Nainirin and the Portal Banrian, a Dark Nainirin, has been searching for the portal for many years. Once Banrian has Eris, she plans to destroy the Keepers and deal a final blow to Oapake, the Hidden God. Overall Interpretations The story is set in a mystical world where Eris must navigate between the mortal and astral realms, guided by Ravian and the Keepers. He faces threats from the Titans and their minions while seeking to unlock and rally the mythical warriors known as the Stone. The ultimate goal seems to be confronting the Dark Nainirin, Banrian, and dealing with the corrupted portal of Oapek. The narrative is rich with elements of myth, supernatural guidance, epic battles against dark forces, forming a classic hero's journey within a high fantasy setting. And I said, and this world exists in the mind of God, who himself is the conveyor, the one who watches the story unfold. And it's like, well, the world described in the narrative exists within the mind of a God, adding a meta layer to the story. This God, referred to as the conveyor, serves as a bridge between the divine narrative and the observer who watches the story unfold. Here's how this additional context fits into the overall understanding. One, existence within the mind of God. 
The entire world and events evolving Eris, the Titans, Keepers, and other mystical beings are creations within the mind of a god. This god's consciousness forms the setting and framework of the story, making the events both real and symbolic within this divine mind. 2. Role of the god as the conveyor. The god serves as a conveyor, implying that he transmits or channels the story and its elements. The god is a mediator or communicator, perhaps even a creator who shapes and guides the unfolding narrative. 3. The observer. There is an observer, possibly the narrator, who watches the story unfold. This observer's role might be to document, interpret, or simply witness the events within the god's mind, providing a link between the divine and mortal perspectives. 4. Layers of Narrative. The story has multiple layers, the surface narrative of Eris and his journey, the underlying existence of this narrative within the mind of the god, and the observer who watches possibly interact with this story. This multi-layered structure adds depth and complexity, lending elements of mythology, theology, and metafiction. Overall, enhanced interpretation. In this enhanced context, Eris' journey and the battle between Titans, Keepers, and other entities take place within a world that is a product of divine imagination. The god, as the conveyor, not only creates and guides the story, but also serves as an intermediary between the story and the observer. The observer who watches the story unfold could be a stand-in for the reader, making the narrative a, a commentary on the nature of storytelling, creation, unst, observation. And it says it adds philosophical dimension, blah, blah, blah. But then I threw on something else. And here's what it says here. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to give you this. Here's the additional information, how it adds. One, Eris's journey and self-discovery. Eris is the central character whose journey is a path of self-discovery. His ultimate goal is to realize the god within himself named Oapek. This realization is pivotal moment that awakens Oapake. And so let's zoom up. Next level. The role of Oapake. Oapake, once awakened, begins his journey to stop the Titans and their minions from taking over the world. This world lies outside the known universe, indicating a realm beyond ordinary comprehension. Oapake's mission. Oapake's mission is to destroy the picture world of the Titans, a metaphorical realm created or influenced by the Titans. By destroying this world, Oapake aims to become one with the creator that guides him. So let's go up to the next level. The creator and the whisper. The creator guides Oapake is the embodiment of death, known as the whisper. The whisper is a fractal element of a higher being, representing an emotion or aspect of this higher being. This higher being uses the whisper as a viewpoint to explore lesser sets of worlds. Let's go up another layer. The writer. The conveyor and the writer. The conveyor, who guides the story, reports back to the writer. The writer is the servant of the gods above him, suggesting a hierarchy of divine beings. The writer's role is to document or craft the story as dictated by the higher gods. The Layers of Reality and Divinity The narrative exists on multiple planes. Eris' journey, a personal quest for self-realization in the battle against the Titans. Oapake's Awakening the emergence of a god within Eris, leading to a divine mission. The creator and the whisper. The embodiment of death, guiding Oapake and representing a higher divine purpose. The conveyor and the writer. The intermediary between the divine nature and the ultimate gods, with the writer documenting the story. And the ultimate gods, the highest being above the writer, who will shape the entire narrative. Overall, Eris' journey is a deeply philosophical and mystical quest that traverses multiple layers of reality and divinity. At its core, it is a story of self-discovery, where Eris must realize and awaken the god within himself, Oapek. This awakening leads to a divine mission to thwart the titans and protect the world beyond the known universe. The creator, whisper, and higher beings add a layer of divine hierarchy, each playing a role in guiding and shaping the narrative. The conveyor and the writer serve as intermediaries, with the writer being a servant to the ultimate gods. The multi-layered narrative explores themes of self-discovery, the interplay between mortal and divine, the battle between good and evil, and the nature of creation and storytelling. It reflects a cosmic structure, where each level of existence is interconnected, and every being has a role in the grand design orchestrated by the gods. 
So I think it did a pretty decent job of interpreting what I was, what's going on in my head, right? Not bad. But as you can kind of see, the story can be very complex in what you're going to get out of it. So let's say I say, okay, you can have book one and book two and book three, and I give them to you. When you read book one, it will be the story of Eris and some kid coming from nowhere. Everything around him is destroyed and he's being led on a path that he can't define. He is blind and he doesn't know where he's going or what's happening to him. So he just follows. But every time people are always telling him, you're, de you're destined to do this. You are the conduit. You are the one to save us. And he will never really understand in book one what any of that means. And throughout the entire journey, he is being led places, told by everyone else what he is. That's to keep it really simple. That's much more than that, but I don't want to ruin the book. Book two becomes Eris stepping out. Now, at this point, he understands there's something to what he'd ha what he must be. And in that, he's got to define what that means. So in book two, he will start to discover that he has some power within him and it will take certain people that will guide him to learn this power. And as the original text that we read up here, that is a general synopsis of the story in a sense, in a very vague, bland sense. This is what it is. And he will confront the keepers and he will learn of the stone and he will realize that he himself is a fractal being of a god above him. But what's important is in book three and the consequently the later ones will start to realize that Eris is just a small player in this. And he is one element of a small emotion that is a fractal element of his creator, Oapake, to which Oapake must open himself, become whole again in the mortal plane so that he is able to free himself in his astral form, which is stuck in the realm of creation. Now, being that he's stuck in the realm of creation, that's driving him mad. It's making him go crazy. And because of that, let's go. This realm is the realm of the mortal plane, okay? This is where Eris exists and all that. Now, the astral realm is above this, and we go through this to access the astral realm. This is the process in which it ex works. I've explained this before. We don't need to get into it. But anyway, Oapake is stuck in the realm of creation in one of the fractal circles that lie above. Remember, these are endless. This circle goes to another one, which goes to another one, which goes to another one, which goes to another one. Outside of the known universe, <laughs> I gotta talk about this so fucking much, but outside of the known universe, our universe, through a different plane of understanding, once you reach the end, you have to shift to a new understanding. We could say you go into another world, another plane, the astral plane, something that transcends, here's a modern word, dimension. You go into another dimension, you have this concept. This is the tool, all of this, in which the Titans created. Now, this is the fractal nature of all of the fucking realms here. That's what that is. And so you have from smallest to largest. And this is transcendence. This is the soul's pilgrimage here. You can transcend through a bread and then the Kaigon is something that spins you back and you go back. It's part of this process and you keep going and going and going until I figure out how to not be a piece of shit. And then boof, and it jumps you up to the next circle. It goes here. And in this, you have another circle and that's another realm. How many are there of these? I don't know yet. So that's kind of how it works. And each one of them has this portal, which we could call the cauldron. Why the fuck not? But in my mind, I've always thought of it as the realm of creation, the, the God's toolbox, the place that makes. And so the Titans made each individual realms as they keep going higher and higher and higher. And each one is fractal in its understanding. So this works like that. And you keep going and going and going. And each one is another realm of understanding. All right. But anyway, Oapake is stuck in the realm of creation. That's driving him mad. And because of that, on this plane here, to which where his people exist, the Aeon, sorry, the Aeoman, it's causing some issues here. And we have conflicts between the Aeon creations and the 
Titan's creations, which are the Anaku, and there's a whole element to it. We have conflicts, we have wars, we have countries fighting each other, all that bullshit. But the main thing I need you to understand is Oapeg above that needs to create whole of his emotions, which have been fractally separated, kind of like the Egyptian myth um, of that God who was split into pieces all around the world. Each person is an element of his mind, is an element of his consciousness. Eris is the one that has to capture them all. And how he does that is his interaction with these characters and his fulfillment of the destiny that is lying above him. In doing that, Oapek will finally be freed from the realm of creation so that he can go and destroy the Titans and have this ultimate war, which lies not here, but in the next realm, in the astral realm, this ethereal place. You know what the astral realm is. Now, in that realm, Oapek must confront the Titans and with that end the constant conflict between he and Thys, because Thys was the true creator of this world. But this world shouldn't exist because it lies outside of the known universe. It's a blasphemy. It should not exist. It should never be there. God knows why it is. And we have to fix this fucking problem. All right? But this all exists in the mind of God. The dual element. We have Thys and we have Oapek. Now, that conflict must resolve. And inside of that conflict, we have their god. They wouldn't understand this, but the god of Oapek and Thys would be the Whisper. The Whisper is a fractal element of a creator. The Whisper is an embodiment of an emotion from the Whisper. Just a one um, emotion. That is the guiding force behind Oapek. And that is a thing which Thys seeks to destroy. So once that's figured out, then that being, the Whisper, can come become whole again. And this place, this Yuandra here, can go into nothingness and darkness as it was before. If you want to understand that more, just go back to the creation, the forgotten story. Uh, the first episode, the second, the third. Watch those and kind of understand what I'm saying. We can go back to nothingness. Now... After going back into nothingness, the whisper completes his objective, which he conveys to his self, which would be the God, the creator, which is the element in which I work through. Now, me working through that being who is watching over all of this helps me unravel all the way up from Eris to me what I must do because I'm being guided by what I feel is the creator above me. But there's gods in the way, just like the Aeon and the Titans to Eris to the Creator. So for me, I'm working through divine beings. I've told you about my dreams. I've told you about what I feel I must do. In that, I'm trying to unravel what the Creator above me truly seeks. And there we have, in as detailed but as simple as I can, just what the point of the book is. It is a transcending process going deeper into the imagination, this other place to which we can pull from the unmanifested into the manifestation reality, right down here. We pull from the unmanifested and the manifested. That's the dividing factors, right? Through that, we can access what I believe to be a God frequency, which is the divide between realm and dream, sorry, the reality and dream. And then we can ascend, descend, and or sorry, ascend and then go forward and it's a process man it's a process from there but hopefully this does some sort of explanation as to what the fuck is going on in this book but i guarantee you you are just even more confused than you were before but don't worry that's how me and the guys are every time we sit down and try to work on this but hopefully that will explain some things to you and we can move forward to the next part